everyone and welcome back to our training videos on ProPresenter 7. Today's video will be about timers, messages, and calendar. To get to timers, go to the top bar and click on timers or use your keyboard shortcut of Control C. This will open a pop-out window. This window is connected to the top bar, but if you want to move it around, all you have to do is click this button right here, then you can move it around your screen wherever you want it. There are three types of timers. We have countdown, countdown to time, and elapsed time. You can select these by clicking this icon here and choosing which type of timer you want. Countdown timers have duration, the ability to overrun and start counting up, start, stop, and reset. Countdown to time allows you to choose the time of day, whether it's AM, PM, or 24 hour clock whether or not it can run past that time. You can start it, stop it, and reset it. And finally, elapsed time allows you to pick a start time and an end time if you want. Whether or not you can run past your end time, you can start it, stop it, and reset it. You can also add a new timer, name it, whatever you would like, Choose the type and set your parameters. You can delete that timer by right clicking and selecting delete. Then at the bottom, it allows you to stop all timers, reset all, and start all. Our timers will appear in various places throughout the software. You can have them appear on your audience displays. You can put them on your stage displays. You can add them in presentation editor to a slide. You can use them for visibility of, uh, of an object in your slide. You can also put them on headers. So if we were to close out of this window, we could go to the header, click on this gear, then choose linked timer. We could choose our countdown. Whether it's going to start, stop, or reset, you can then choose the parameters of the timer also how long that duration will be and whether it'll overrun then it gives you a trigger button you can click that trigger button and if we go back to our timers our timer countdown is now running we'll go ahead and reset that another place you can see timers is in messages so if you go to your top bar and select messages or your keyboard shortcut of control m this will open a pop-out window as well you can link this window to the top bar by using this button again. It will show you all of your messages, the content of your message, and if you wanted to add to your content of your message, you have uh, content containers over here where you could bring in a message container and then you could bring in a countdown container. So this countdown would be linked to our countdown in our timers. So when I start it, you'll see it run right here. Then you can pick your theme. So if we select maybe full screen lyrics, you could pick when it's dismissed, whether that's manually by clearing it, when a timer expires, if there's a timer on the message, or after a certain amount of time. You could also create your own container by naming it and clicking the plus button. Finally, you can see your containers at the bottom that are in your message. So we have a message container. We can fill that out with whatever message we want. And then we can see our countdown container, which allows us to see the type of timer it is, how long it is, whether it can be overrun, and the format that we want to choose, just like we saw in presentation editor video. Then we have the ability to change the transition for putting a message on screen or off screen. And then we can show our message. So if I click show, it'll put up into our display, service starts in the countdown timer. Now, if we wanted to clear that, 
we could go click on the X next to the message, or if we had multiple messages running, we could click the Clear All button. Then if we wanted to create a new message, we just click this plus button here. We can name it by clicking on it or hit return, and we can rename our message. We can add in content again and, and fill out whatever message we want. We can also add text inside of this box and show just text. You can delete a container or you can delete a message by selecting the message and choosing delete. Finally, you can make a message a web notification. So if you were to choose allow web notifications, it's just a checkbox, then you could come down to show web access. And when you click on this, it'll bring you to a web browser that gives you your containers. So I could fill this out real fast and hit send. This will send a notification from ProPresenter and I can say show now. And if I go back to ProPresenter, you'll notice there is some things running right now, but if I were to clear those, you'll notice that my message is now on the screen. To clear that message off, again, we could just click the X next to the message. Finally, there's calendars. And as you notice in the background, a playlist triggered all on its own. Well, my Thursday playlist actually has a calendar symbol next to it. So if we go to calendars by going to view calendar or using your keyboard shortcut of control option C, it'll open a pop out window. You can enable or disable your calendar. You can see all of your events. So in this case, I had an event for today at 2 p.m. I told it to repeat every Monday all the way through April 30th at 2 p.m. Then I can choose an action and an action is what playlist do you want to trigger? So I chose pre-service slides and then you have the ability to test it. So if you click test, it'll show you just like you saw earlier that pre-service slides started scrolling. You can also choose to see all of your calendar events, recurring events, or just see the one event. So then you can then look into it to see that is reoccurring or repeating. You can choose to look at current uh, events in your calendar, or you can add your own event. You can name your event and set up a different action for it. Thank you for watching this video on timers, messages, and calendars. I hope you continue learning with us in the next video.